Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to thank both of you for coming. Uh, all right, so here's where we're going to start. We're going to start with a little bit of an exercise. An exercise, uh, an exercise in mind reading. Now, I apologize in advance. Um, I got to see a little bit of Kim's presentation yesterday, but not Jill's. So I fixed most of the colors, but the transitions are there. <laughs> so we're going to start mind reading. Here's what we're going to do. Follow my instructions. Everybody pay attention. And I'll tell you in advance, your secrets are safe with me. Free easy payments at $99. <laughs> so here's what you're going to do. The next slide, you're going to see a series of playing cards. When the slide comes up, what you are to do is the first playing card you see, focus in on it, look at it, close your eyes, create a mental picture of that playing card. All right? Everybody on board? Let's go. First one. Got it? Close your eyes. Focus on it. Clear your mind. Focus on it. Think about that card. You got a picture of it? Open your eyes. I'm going to make it disappear. It's gone. Now, if you don't know how that's done, that will keep you up tonight. <laughs> the problem is, that's a magic trick. But teaching isn't. We don't have the ability to read someone's mind in the classroom. We have to have a mechanism to determine whether or not what we're trying to teach them is actually learned. Let's change the paradigm a bit. Now I'm going to put up a high-level math problem. Fortunately, Dean Martinez is gone because after I heard his background, <laughs> it may take you a moment, but what I want you to do is when you see this high-level math problem, I want you to answer it as quickly as you can, not out loud, just in your head, right? <clears throat> and you don't want your neighbors to cheat, so you just keep it to yourself. Answer as quickly as you can. Ready? Go. Got it? Okay. Now, how did you solve it? How did you solve it? We're going to come back to that in a moment. In traditional law schools, what we do is we have two forms of, quote, assessment, unquote. Right? Most law schools, certainly when I went to law school, which was 100 years ago, you went in, you had a final exam, that was it. Right? If you didn't get it, you got your grade back telling you you didn't get it, it's too late to fix it. A lot of law schools still operate on that principle. Others, many, have added a midterm. But you still have the same problem with a midterm. The problem is, what happens in that in-between time, the time between when you begin your course and the substantive material and the midterm, the time between the midterm and the final exam, you don't know whether they're getting it or not. You think, well, but we have interaction with how many students? You can't interact with every student, every class period, and assess whether they're getting it or not. You can't unless you have a solution. We're going to talk about the solution. So we need some more frequent, if you will, tool to help assess what the students are doing. Let me share a little bit of a story with you. Evidence. Evidence is one of my primary courses that I teach. And in evidence, I use clickers for this sort of solution almost every single day. And I get that data, and that data can inform what I do. So for example, if I put a question up and I got this response, 63% of my class selected B. Now, if, if B is the correct answer, I'm probably feeling pretty good, right? If C is the correct answer, I'm not feeling so good. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I, I'm supposed to be teaching, and clearly that's not happening. Now, this isn't enough information. You still have to get a dialogue. What's nice is this empowers students in a way you cannot imagine. Because even though they might be the, the student who's quiet and timid and introverted or not wanting to speak out because of the fear we talked about and heard about so much today, suddenly it's, well, I want to defend my position. And here's the cool part. Let's suppose that the answer is C. Most of your students pick B. And they want to defend B. And they think, hey, I'm not the only one that, that thought it was B. 
And you can learn lots of things from that dialogue. You can learn how they process the information you taught them. You can also learn, by the way, if you wrote a bad question. Because I'm here to tell you, writing multiple choice questions is very difficult to write good ones. And you can learn. I write bad ones all the time. So, and this is how I find out. But here's something else that happened. That happened recently. I've been using clickers for about nine years, I think. And I've never had this happen. Every single question in a class, the entire class got 100% right. Never had that happen before. I'm feeling pretty good. I got all right. I'm doing so fine. Then the dialogue started. <laughs> and here's what I found out. Some people got the right answer for the wrong reason. And let's face it, if they get the right answer for the wrong reason, I haven't done my job well. Right? So let me give you an analogy. Let's go back to our math problem. I'm going to tell you, and I'm not making this up. You're going to think I'm nuts, and I am. Um, this is how I process this math problem. How many of you learned? Multiplication tables when you were growing up. Memorize them. I didn't. Nobody ever taught me to memorize multiplication tables, ever. That sounds crazy, but I did. So I developed a way to process these, and I'm going to show you exactly if this is really what my mind goes through. <laughs> these guys really so, cool transition. So <laughs> the first thing I do <laughs> is I add up the sevens. That's so what my head does. That becomes, in my head, this, which becomes this, or not. Now, you think, well, it works, but it doesn't work for 7 times 7, and it doesn't work for 9 times 9, <laughs> right? If, they, if our students get the right answer for the wrong reason, they can't transition that to a different fact pattern and analyze it the way we want them to. We've got to know if they're getting the right answer for the wrong reason. That dialogue is enhanced when they have that feedback in the classroom and you have that feedback. It's incredibly empowering. And you'll get, you'll get my theory in a minute. We've got to figure out a way to get into their heads, and this does it in a way that is unbelievable. The more you use them, the more the students get into them, the dialogue and the energy is unbelievable. And you know what I started doing is actually flipping the classroom, where reading, video, and stuff like that comes beforehand. I'll walk into class and throw up a multiple choice question, and we get started. And the students, they love it. And I have never seen such incredible preparation incredible interactivity than when I started this process. And the students are going, oh, I wish all the professors were here. And, it's, and it, I really feel like learning is, is improving, and my data supports it because I do this every class, and I have lots and lots of data, and I have comparative data. I use an interactive solution to create this active engagement. There's lots of them. I use Turning Point, and I've used it forever, and it's really powerful. Here's what I think is going on. I think it's sort of like game theory. It's almost a competition. Sometimes it's a competition between the students. Sometimes it's a competition between the students and me. Right? They feel like I want to get it right. And I want them to want to get it right. Because my job is to teach them how to get it right. So it leads to new math. I think regular assessment. Assessment that is peppered throughout your semester plus active engagement equals better learning and better teaching. That's what I think. So here's your takeaways, I hope. Assessment should be at regular intervals, not just a final, not just a midterm, lots of assessment. Interactive technology provides a solution for that. The technology facilitates classroom-wide engagement, and I have seen that over and over again. Regardless of how quiet a student is, this gets them talking. It enhances the learning process, and we use that to inform our teaching.